six. It's midnight. My stomach hurts. I scream and writhe, tired of knowing that there is nothing she can do to help. She says, it's OK, baby. Drink some water. You'll be fine. I pull my clothes off and lay on the hard tile in an attempt to cool my blood. It's the only thing that helps. She pours me more water. I writhe. I'm 15. I spend my summers working in stables. She teaches. We earn my lessons one by one. We all fall. And this particular time, it's a new horse, fresh off the track. Someone's left the gate open, and he takes off. Should I jump? No. It's too late. Win the gravel lot, full gallop. I slide off the side, hoping to hit the ground as softly as I can. I feel my spine compress as I slide across the rocks and sand. Can you move? Is anything broken? I want a doctor. It hurts. She says, too expensive. Healthcare is a luxury we can't afford. I struggle for weeks with the pain. It goes away with time. All pain does. I'm 22, in college now, earning my debt like a good lower middle class citizen looking for a way out. <laughs> I live with five girls in a decaying blue and red country house. We drink together, get high together, eat together, go to all the dark, sweaty, smoke-filled house parties we can find. We spend weekends half adrenaline filled and wasted, half asleep in the living room, wearing last night's rags reeking of booze and cigarettes. I wake up from my afternoon nap on our beer-stained couch to my roommate's phone blasting, Teenage Wasteland! It's only Teenage Wasteland! <laughs> She's on the other end of the house. Raquel, it's time for your birth control! <laughs> they, they discuss sex with boys, methods of contraception. They trade stories about the horrors of pap smears, STD tests, gynecologists. They don't know it yet, but... I'm gay, and I'm lost. They're speaking a foreign language. I keep quiet. I'm 26. Drunken fun nights are what life's about. We dance at karaoke bars and sing along to our favorite songs. Across the bar, I hear it. I believe in a thing called love is being belted out of tune and by some drunk ex-middlehead. I know it's time. I'm compelled. I run up to the front to air guitar like the world is ending and nothing else matters. Just as I slam my foot down on the cheap beer-stained carpet for the most epic of air guitar sessions, I feel it. It's happened before, but last time I was younger and had much, 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 much more alcohol coursing through my veins. The pain is instant. My leg collapses and I twist and roll onto the ground. I feel a pop as I straighten my body and begin to sit up. In an instant, I've dislocated my kneecap and while sitting up, pushed it back into place. A herd of giant men surround me in seconds. Don't touch me. I sit, stunned and not knowing whether I'm going to puke or pass out. Eventually, the nausea a passes, and the security guards, grabbing me tightly under each arm, help me to the bar patio. My friend buys me a shot and a pack of smokes. Who needs a doctor when you have friends like that? I fill out paperwork saying I won't sue. If you've never spent a couple days dragging your now useless body across your living room floor, I should tell you that it gets old fast. Despite the fact that I have no insurance and at my wit's end, I give in and I go to the ER. They tell me I'm fine. It will just take time. Time, that's the treatment. Oh, and the biggest, most awkward leg brace you could imagine. Of course, this amazing care comes to a grand total of several thousand dollars, all in separate bills that come at the most random times. I pay some, I don't pay others. They put out a collections notice. I explain how I had never even received that bill, and of course I'll make a payment right now. I pay the next couple bills that show up in the mail. One day, it all just disappeared, just like that. No more bills, no collections letter, I'm sure I hadn't paid at all, but would you call? Hey, so I think I still owe you money. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. Funny how that works. I'm 28. It's a shame now. The dark secret lurking in the corners. My friends still talk about sex, pap smears, gyno visits, breast exams, but this time, I've got my government-funded health care, 
And now, for the first time in years, I'm covered. Still, cheapest of the cheap. The provider mails me a letter. We've noticed that it's time for your annual gyno visit. Have you picked your doctor yet? Have I picked my doctor? Have I picked my doctor? I've never, never even been to a gyno, much less known how to pick one out. I call, I try to decipher the jargon, the costs, the procedures, the doctors, all the choices. Am I covered? What am I covered for? I make her repeat herself over and over. I'm lost. She assures me as to how simple it all is. I want costs. I want tangible numbers, real solid statements about what I can and cannot afford to have done. How much will they cover? She can't answer. She can only give rough estimates and generalizations. Going to the doctors feels like a gamble now. Every time I wonder, is this covered? How much will I owe if I have them check this? Or should I just stay home? Those antibiotics I didn't finish last time are still just as good, right? <laughs> she asks if I want help picking out a primary health care physician. I'll do it myself, reassuring her that I understand everything she told me and that, of course, I'll go online and pick a doctor right away. I hang up the phone. I breathe deep. They call it health care. You know, you know what? I don't care. <laughs>